welcome to Grace Episcopal Church in Winfield, Kansas. I'm Mother Lori Lewis, the rector here at Grace, as well as the rector at Trinity Episcopal Church down the highway in Arkansas City, Kansas. Also serving in today's liturgy are Mother Kathy Swain, the assisting priest at Grace and Trinity. She will be celebrating the liturgy of the table. And then Deacon Karen Deal is back with us, and we will be pleased to have her proclaim the gospel. This is our worship for Sunday, January 10th, 2021. This is the feast of the baptism of our Lord. The liturgy comes from our Book of Common Prayer. It is a Holy Eucharist right to liturgy. You may go to our website and download the worship booklet, but the people's responses will also be on the screen for you. If you are new to Episcopal worship, know that you are welcome here. Allow the beauty of this worship and the knowledge that we believe in a loving, liberating, life-giving God to carry you as you participate with us today. Now, we will begin with our opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me in Canticle 13 for our song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths, in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Now let us hear from the word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis, beginning with the first chapter and the first verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and the darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this day is Psalm 29. We will pray it together in unison. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. 
Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning in the 19th chapter and first verse. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside 
and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We come together in love, the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of the baptism of our Lord, and we are back today in the Gospel of Mark. You might remember that we read through the Gospels in a three-year cycle. Year A is Matthew, year B is Mark, and year C is Luke. And then the Gospel of John is interspersed on special occasions throughout those other three years. So since this is from the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, I want to back up a little bit from today's Gospel reading. Today's Gospel reading started in verse 4. And I think the previous three verses are very important. Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness. And it carries on with where our gospel began today. Each of the gospels were written by different people with a different purpose. And you can get a clue to what the purpose is in the way they begin or open their gospel. Mark says the beginning of the good news. That's really important. The beginning of the good news, as it was written by the prophet. So Mark is highlighting, his reminding those who hear his gospel of what the prophet said. The prophet said another prophet would come. And in fact, in the prophet Micah, it said Elijah would return. So a prophet in the way of Elijah is who the people were looking for to then point to the Messiah. Mark is being very clear that John the Baptist is who they were looking for. So eyes wide open, look for the Messiah from John. John is out there looking exactly like Elijah was described, wearing camel's hair, eating honey and locusts. He's, he fits Elijah's description to a T. 
and he is proclaiming a baptism of repentance. What's coming forth from John's baptism is truth-telling. Mark says that people came from all around the Judean countryside. They came to John to be baptized, and they confessed their sins. Truth came forth from them as they were washed in the waters, declaring that they were ready for the Messiah. And John says, I baptize you with water, but the one coming after me will baptize you with the Spirit. Our Old Testament lesson today from the very beginning of Genesis reminds us about the Spirit. In the beginning, the wind of God Poured forth over the darkness and the chaos. In the wind of God, that's the spirit of God, God says, let there be light. The spirit of God creates. And then, what did we people do? The Old Testament scriptures, including the words of the prophets were recorded by faithful people. They were recording as best they understood the revelation of God. But throughout their understanding, God gets put in a box. Over and over again, there are boundaries put on God. If a person talks to God, then they will die. The prophet Elijah, Elijah talked to God. If a person looks at God, they will die. The prophet Elijah got to look at the back of God, at least. There were all these boundaries as they best understood it. Mark and Mark's gospel wants to make clear. Yes, look at the prophets. Repent and prepare for that spirit of God to once again recreate. And then Mark says, here comes Jesus. When Jesus comes to John, Jesus too receives this baptism, this baptism of repentance, this cleansing of truth-telling. And as Jesus comes out of the water, the words Mark uses are very clear. The heavens were ripped apart. They were rendered open. It's not just the heavens opened and the Spirit descended. The heavens were ripped open and the Spirit flew down like a dove. The boundaries put on God were to be no more. The voice says, you are my beloved son. The voice, the word of God that created, let there be light, declares, you are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. The boundary was broken. To quote a seminary professor of um, the commentators I listen to a lot, they, they refer to um, uh, Dr. Ward Jewell saying, God was on the loose. In history, in, in the history as, as recorded by lots of people, Hebrew people, Roman people, Christians, Gospel of Mark, in history, there was a man, Jesus. And Mark tells us through history, through the ministry of Jesus, the boundaries have been torn apart and God is on the loose. You see, all of this is what's important to Mark. 
The prophets proclaimed this would happen. John was the prophet we're looking for, and Jesus showed up, and the heavens were torn open. Throughout Mark's gospel, we're going to be looking for those boundaries being removed. I'm going to give you a spoiler. When Jesus is crucified in Mark's gospel, the curtain in the temple that separated humans from God's presence, that curtain was rent apart. Just the same word as Mark used to describe the heavens being torn open when Jesus was backed up. Between the boundary being torn open at Jesus' baptism and the boundary of the curtain being torn down, we're going to watch for these boundary opening moments. As we do each week during our principal worship, we, we proclaim the Nicene Creed, a statement of our faith. Today, just like the truth-telling that came forth from John's baptism, we're, we're going to use, instead of the creed, we're going to use our baptismal covenant, which declares the truth we believe. It's important to note that on after the belief statements, we're going to answer and make promises of what it means to live this truth. And in each answer, we will say, I will with God's help. See, we, we need to remember the Spirit of God is with us. We still, in the 21st century, put boundaries on the Spirit of God. We have put God, rather than a box, we put God in a building. And I know I've said it over and over again through this pandemic, that this is not the church. The church is not a building. The church is the people out doing the good news, proclaiming the truth of God. But I've got to keep saying it because we're a long ways in and getting disheartened. We're losing our habits. The baptismal covenant will say, will you keep up the habits of the apostles? We need to remind ourselves the truth that the Spirit of God empowers us to do that. The good news of Jesus Christ, as Mark begins his gospel, the good news is still good news, just like I said on Christmas. When the angels proclaim good news, it's still good news in a pandemic. But we've, we've got to reach down within ourselves, pull ourselves up, and we've got to proclaim that truth and claim it and live it over and over again, reminding us. The Spirit of God cannot be put in a box. And through us, the Spirit of God is on the loose, proclaiming the loving, liberating, life-giving God who created us and sends us forth into the world. Amen. Now, let us profess our faith using the words of the baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. We pray for the Right Reverend Kathleen Bascom, our bishop, and the Diocese of Kansas. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Guitar, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Yemen, Iran, and Iraq. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity, our Kansas City. In the beginning, O God, you created all summoning everything that exists, moving over the face of the deep with the wind of the Spirit, speaking forth light and goodness. So move across your creation, making all that is broken to be whole, and move over the waters of our lives for good once more. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. As Jesus confirmed his ministry in the waters of baptism at the Jordan River, so recall to us our own baptism into the mission of Christ and strengthen us for the tasks you have given into our hands. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. As St. Paul completed the knowledge of the believers at Ephesus upon whom the Holy Spirit came with power, so deepen our faith and make us strong where we are lacking. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. We intercede for all who hold authority in the nations of the world and especially for these United States for our President, our Congress, and the Supreme Court, that they might seek after wisdom and turn to you for guidance, who alone orders our unruly affections. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. Shepherd your flock, O God, remembering especially those in any illness or distress, that as the people found guidance in the words of John the Baptist, so we too may learn the way in which we ought to walk in times of difficulty. Please add your own petitions.
In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. As you proclaim Jesus, your well-beloved Son, help us to know the favor we have found with you, being sealed in Christ and made more and more to walk in his ways. The Lord shall give strength to the people. The Lord shall give the blessing of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Again. Welcome. We're so glad you have joined us today. We upload uh, a video for each Sunday. Um, we try to upload two. One is the entire worship service, and one is just the sermon, in case you want to uh, share just that, that sermon um, with someone you know. We have that smaller file to point you to. But I encourage you, please, to subscribe, follow, like, heart, notify, all of those things you can click on YouTube or on Facebook. Please do all of that, and that will help us uh, with the algorithms that help us to spread the good news that we believe in. Um, I want to, especially on this Sunday, January 10th, welcome. Karen Deal, Deacon Karen Deal, uh, to be back with us in Cowley County. She was ordained to the diaconate last June and has been serving the first six months of her internship with the wonderful people at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Derby. And we are so glad to have her back uh, with us. She um, will always be connected with St. Andrews in Derby, as well as St. Jude's in Wellington, uh, along with Trinity, Ark City, and Grace Winfield, because we are all connected in what's called the Minster, the South by Southwest Minster of the Episcopal Diocese of Kansas. And as um, an active deacon within this minster, Karen will be connected with all of the churches, just as we are all connected in ministry. Before our regular Sunday um, worship, we're really glad to have her back with us. Um, annual meetings are coming up. Uh, January is the time when we have our annual business meeting. And I can tell you when they'll be, but I cannot yet tell you how they'll be. Trinity's annual meeting will take place at some point on Sunday. And Grace's annual meeting will take place on January 31st. Haven't quite decided on the format yet. Uh, I can promise you, though, it will not be indoors. 
um, uh, together as this pandemic continues. But we will figure out a way um, to have a, a virtual meeting um, and create ways that the most people can participate in um, this important action of uh, the church. Please, if you are someone who needs to give an annual report, please write something down and send it to our parish administrator um, that serves both Grace and Trinity, uh, Lynn Watley. You can get her email address um, in the Contact Us page on our website. Please send her your annual report so that she can compile that and we can get a completed report to everyone in both parishes. Then watch your email for um, a lot of information as we build up towards the annual meetings, information about how we're going to meet, and also for a link to a survey. Um, you may remember last summer, we all did a survey about the pandemic, about how we were feeling, um, about um, what we felt was necessary to keep us safe. Well, it's time for us to look at that again. Things are changing as the vaccine um, is now arriving very slowly in Cowley County, but it's, it's arriving and more and more of us are going to be vaccinated. And I want to hear from you about when you're going to feel ready and feel confident um, about the next steps. The um, bishop has had the in-person indoor worship has been suspended uh, through this past Wednesday. And now each Sunday, from now through Palm Sunday, we have to look at our numbers. We're going to, there's a uh, data that's collected and presented by the uh, Kansas Department of Health and Environment, KDHE, and we need to meet some, some goal marks. Um, and that is in the uh, positive test percentage and the uh, daily new case rate per 100,000 population. It's all a lot of numbers, but trust me, we've, we've got a spreadsheet. We're checking each week. And when Cowley County reaches a certain goal, then we will once again be offering um, some different options. But in the meantime, remember that we gather each Sunday in the courtyard at Grace and Winfield for lawn chair morning prayer. Our principal service is this Holy Eucharist that is available to everyone, even those uh, without um, an internet connection. We will make it available, um, and there are, are ways for them to call in and listen to the worship, um, all sorts of things. Contact us. Um, let us know what you need to participate in the life of faith of grace and trinity. And finally, remember if you, remember if you forgot, if you forgot to turn in a pledge card for this year, for 2021, it's never too late. Go to our website, Go uh, to the giving or donate menu and find there our annual giving campaign where you can pledge and let our vestries know what you commit to do to support the kingdom work of grace and trinity through uh, this coming year. Um, we, we have continued to do God's kingdom work even through this pandemic, but I know there is a lot of pent up energy to do even more. Once, um, once this pandemic cloud has lifted and uh, the safety situation changes again. Um, with that, it is our custom to pray over um, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And if that is you, we want you to remember that on your special day, you are very special in God's eyes. You were created in the image of God, and we want to celebrate you. Won't you please join with me as we pray? Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your children as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace 
and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the altar of the Lord in Holy Communion, remembering that during this time when we are not physically receiving the bread and wine of Holy Communion, we are spiritually receiving this sacrament in our hearts. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Continuing with the great thanksgiving, Eucharistic prayer, C. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. 
At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness, and forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his works of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rachel, and Rebecca, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may, be worth, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our, sa- our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us join together to receive the sacrament of our Lord spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise in thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you physically in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Let us continue with our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, shine through you to those around you, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord.